The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. You got markets picking things up in negative territory yet again. Uh, August looking to be a little bit of a tough month for the market after quite the acceleration in July. We got the S&Ps off by about nine points right now. That's two tenths percent. The red trading at 44.45. We got the Nasdaq 100. We're off by about two tenths as well. Hanging on to that 15,000 handle. We were up at almost 15,350 early yesterday. Right now we're at 15,072. The lows of early Monday, Courtney correlating to the lows of Friday as well. We're only about 30 points from that level. Actually made it to a low of 15,020 Sunday night on the futures. Dow off 64 points below anything we've seen in terms of Sunday or recently. You back things up on a daily on the Dow. And as I said, you got to go back to basically a month ago, July 18th, where we are on the Dow, right? Dow now, yeah, gives up 35,000. We're trading at 34,944 right now on the Dow. We were as high as 35,843. So you're talking about almost 1,000 points in the Dow we've given up. You jump over to the S&Ps. You're talking about almost 200 points, right? You're approaching a 5% pullback from the highs that we hit towards the end of July. You jump over to the NASDAQ 100, you're talking about 1,000 points there. And boy, some of the haircuts we've had in some of the FANG stocks. I was hearing something like 9% on Apple, man. Decisive break out of that upward channel that began at the beginning of the year in Apple. We're now basing it around 177, a far cry from 198.23. The highs made July 19th. The acceleration really started August 1st. It's been quite an August. We'll see. We're only about halfway through the month. We jump over to crude. Crude backing off a bit from the highs we've had recently. We're trading flat right now in the session. Quite a pullback yesterday. You got crude right now trading right near $81. We're flat on the session. Gold contract down about $2 this morning at $19.32. We jump over to notes and bonds. Quite the day yesterday, right? Did the program early in the morning, and boy, it charged higher, man. You had the 10-year down to a price point of 109.11. By the time the acceleration finished, we were up at 110.06, talking about almost a full point move in the 10 year. Uh, right now, we're basically positive by four ticks in the 10 year right now, trading at 109.28. That's correlating to a yield still above 4.2%, 4.21%. Uh, we get the Fed minutes as well today. What time's that at? Two o'clock, I believe, Eastern time. Uh, yeah, from their July meeting. Those minutes will be out. I believe it's 2 p.m. Eastern time. Maybe somebody's got it in the den. Uh, we'll get the Fed minutes today. We'll see what they talked about, see how much dissent they possibly had. The minutes sometimes can provide something. I wouldn't look to anything too dramatic, though, in those minutes. We get Chairman Powell in nine days, right? Jackson Hole. That could be interesting as well. You jump over to the volatility index. Higher prices as we get a market pullback yet again. 16.55 in that volatility index. we got to jump around to the dollar. Quite a day from the dollar yesterday as well. These moves in the currencies, man, mammoth. Yesterday, the dollar goes from 102.85 up to 103.25. You trade back below 103 overnight, just like that. We're at 103.20 right now. You take a look at the daily on the dollar. We get back the entire pullback from July, right? I've talked about this before. Something's going on with these candles. Not sure why they show up like that. I don't think that's how the action went. But nonetheless, that is how the price went in terms of trading from 103.50 down to below 100. We've gotten it all back. We're right back to that area on July 5th, just above 103 at 103.20 on the dollar index. All right, what else we got going on today? We got to talk about some Target earnings, man. Target. They trade lower yesterday, but they get it back today, man. Out with their earnings this morning. Decent earnings. They revised their outlook, but they beat on earnings. And the market was – looks like the market was pretty worried, man, because they revised their outlook. But I think the market was pretty worried about what was coming down the line. And uh, they 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 beat the expectations enough where you're up by about 8 bucks, man. And to put things in context here – you jump to the fun, um, fundamentals. You're talking about an $8 move. Always remarkable when, when they peg it, right? $8 move in either direction. So if you were buying volatility last night, you might break even on the open. 
you had to buy volatility directionally, as in you had to actually pick a side, then buy the volatility, and you're still paying about $4. So you're getting an $8 move to the upside if you were bullish. Jumping back to those target numbers real quick, they slashed the full-year forecast. That's the negative. They beat on earnings, though. They cut its full-year sales and profit forecast as it tries to win over shoppers who are watching their wallets. I'm telling you, folks, Target. I love Target. They got a great brand. They got a great store. Uh, I enjoy it with Tommy. They got a great toy section. We go there and almost do a Toys R Us type experience for you 80s and 90s children out there. Uh, you know, we go around the toy section. He gets to play with all the toys. Uh, and then we got to ditch all of them before we leave so we don't have to buy them all. Great experience for that. But I tell you, I am hyper aware that within Target, everything seems pretty expensive, man. Now, Publix is a very expensive entity as well. We got those all over Florida, as I'm sure you're aware. But, boy, when you look at what you're buying in there, I'm always saying, Tommy, we can get that somewhere else. We'll get that for you another place. I'll order that online. I'll get that for you from Walmart or something like that. Target, man, they charge expensive stuff for a lot of what they have. It would make sense that they're having trouble winning over shoppers who are watching their wallets. And remember, folks, we're only about six weeks out from when those student loan payments start. That's going to hit people in the wallet to the tune of three to five hundred bucks a month. And you're talking about tens of millions of Americans that just all of a sudden have a three to five hundred dollar payment just like that out of the blue that they have not had to pay in more than three years. Now, getting into the numbers where they slash the outlook. The company said it now expects comp sales to decline by about mid-single digits for the, full for the full fiscal year and earnings per share in the range of 7 to $8. It previously anticipated comp sales would range from a low single-digit de decline to a low single-digit increase. So say goodbye to the increase, folks. Comp sales are going to be in mid single digits decline that's around a five percent decline when they said hey we might even be in a single digit increase not so much earnings per share they were looking for 775 to 875 that number they shaved 75 cents off it basically from seven to eight dollars struggling shares surged in pre-market trading despite the soft focus why did they do that that's a big reason right there man they bring a buck 80 to the bottom line versus a buck 39 they beat on earnings they miss on revenue 24.77 versus 25.16 uh, but yeah, the market is liking the fact that they bring some down to the bottom line, even as they're facing some headwinds going forward. And the market knew there were headwinds, folks. I mean, check out this chart, right? You want to talk about negativity priced in? We take out the chart. We go back to just even the last year. There's the drop off from the last earnings, man. And we're going to just pop basically to where we were trading at on Monday. 133 this thing was trading at as high as 131.82 on monday trading we're back to that price level um you're going to be back within the consolidation area we've been in basically since may 31st which is when they uh that slide really started accelerating right on some of their pride month merchandise and all that stuff so nonetheless you got target shares they're up by eight bucks this morning we'll see where they go on the open we jump over to some other Retailers, you jump over to TJ Maxx, they're higher as well, quite a different chart, right? They're out with their numbers, and they're trading higher by about $3. Yeah, $2.50, 3 bucks. So TJ Maxx is higher. You got Target higher. Let's see if Walmart's getting a lift on those numbers. They do get a lift briefly on the numbers from Target. You're just like that, though. You're back to basically where you were at about 3 p.m. Eastern time yesterday afternoon on Walmart Chips. All right, we got some housing to talk about today, folks. We got our man Kevin Hanks. We'll be talking to him when we come back from the break. We'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstead at 40 past the hour. Lots to talk about, folks. Stay tuned. I'll be right back in three minutes. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 
45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We've got S&P futures negative by about seven points right now, trading two-tenths percent. The red at 44.46. We jump around to some of those other equities I was mentioning. We jump around to target shares right now, trading up a bit from where they were, even as we were discussing. You're up by about nine bucks right now, trading at 134. You jump over to TJ Maxx, as I mentioned, their numbers. They're trading higher by about $3 as well. You jump over to Walmart on the heels of some retail. Walmart catches a bit, but we've pulled back just a bit. I jump over to Coinbase. So Coinbase... Yeah, they're going to be doing crypto futures, man. Let me pull this article up right now. There it is. They win approval to sell crypto futures in the U.S. Derivatives is a huge crypto market. The dwarfs spot trading. Coinbase expects to launch the product within several weeks. Uh, Coinbase Financial Markets, a subsidiary of the U.S. biggest crypto exchange, has secured approval from the National Futures Association to operate a futures commission as a futures commission merchant and offer access to crypto futures the offering will launch within weeks and uh they've been working on it for some time yeah i would expect so man now interesting that you get quite a little pop on coinbase here okay you close yesterday at 79 we push 8330 no real reaction on bitcoin there though interesting maybe that's your pop on that news from 29 to 29 uh nonetheless no nonetheless no real huge pop there on bitcoin even though you catch a little bit of a pop on coinbase and I've said it before, folks, but if you're going to get into crypto, I would get into crypto. I wouldn't get into Coinbase, okay? Yes, we're catching a pop. This thing's up to 83. Boy, you want volatility. You got it. Just look at this weekly chart. Let's put it on the daily for Coinbase. Talk about catching a bid from 50 up to 114, okay? But be careful, folks, because this thing just pulled back almost 30%, right? From 114 down to 79, we're catching a bid up to 83. Um but you're playing with a little bit of fire in Coinbase that you don't have to play with in Bitcoin in terms of that company and the way that they make money off of trading. Because I don't think we're going back to the heyday, man. We're not going back to the heyday where everybody was buying and selling Dogecoin and you had Robinhood making hundreds of millions or billions of dollars practically on Doge trading. That was quite a time in history. Not sure we're going back to that one. Yeah. All right, what else we got pulled up here? Let's take a look at some of the articles we got pulled up as we get through the trading day. And we got about 10 minutes right now till the opening bell. What do we got? We talked about Target. They're surprised. We, well, let's talk Fed minutes. Yeah, so the Fed minutes set to show only a minority saw the end of tightening. Majority were cautiously optimistic. Okay, so they are looking 
for only a minority saying that they saw the end of tightening. We'll see how they go, man. I think that's the writing on the wall right now. I think they're trying to stop. I think they want it to be the end, even though you've had all these unanimous hikes. But I think they are restrictive enough. I mean, pay attention to that pause, man. That's all I can say. Pay attention to that pause because, yes, it was a pause. They came back with a hike. But, boy, I think they're going at least every other meeting right now. I'd be shocked unless we get some crazy data coming out in early September for the August numbers in terms of jobs, in terms of payrolls, in terms of wages, et cetera, inflation, CPI. But withstanding that, right, the CPI, U.S. Consumer Price Index, you look at where we're, excuse me, minus food and energy, we're talking about core. I mean, you can see the roll over there. That's what they're following, okay? And boy, it has been hike, quite a hiking cycle. I mean, look at where we were in 2018, 19. That is nothing compared to what we just did. And meanwhile, we get the markets pushing all-time highs yet again. Uh, so pay attention to that one. The red has rolled over, but it's got a long way to go. Core is at four, six, five, man. They want it to be at two. That's going to take some time. We'll see where we go from there. Yields, of course, an interesting one as yields have spiked dramatically um, back to almost the recent highs. Some Fed governors, such as Philly President Patrick Harker, have indicated the central bank might not need to keep raising interest rates. Others including Fed Governor Michelle Bowman, have taken the opposite view. We've been covering some of those views. Investors currently do not expect another rate increase this year, though the implied odds of a hike at the October 31st, November 1st meeting are higher than those for their next meeting, September 19th and 20th. That actually makes sense because it seems like they would want to just give it one more pause, right? They're probably going every other meeting. They'd never tell you that. They'd never lock themselves into that. It would be foolish to do it even if that was their plan. But I think that's their idealistic plan right now. And it would make sense because if you follow the logic on why they did a pause the first time, OK, pretty similar to where we are right now, right? They can give it a one meeting at least, see where the data flows. I mean, think about how much data we're going to get by the time you make it to that October 31st, November 1st meeting, right? Plethora of data, to say the least. And – uh yeah, and so we're looking for um, a general sense of the relative size of each camp on the committee at the time of the July meeting in terms of who's on what side, man. Who wants what? That should help limit concerns that the labor market – yeah, so this is – they pointed in particular to a quarterly report on wage growth, July 28th, which showed a sharp deceleration, and an August 3rd report on unit labor costs, which also re revealed a subdued rate of increase. That should help limit concerns the labor market will further fuel inflation. As such, we expect FOMC sentiment has turned more dovish since the July meeting. Since the July meeting. Yeah, I think it's pretty dovish in terms of where we are right now, the numbers we get. I mean, you take rent equivalent ownership numbers in terms of owner rent equivalent, what you would be paying in rent for the house you own. You take that out of CPI, which is what Europe does. Okay, Europe doesn't include owner rent equivalent, okay, because it, you, it's a theoretical number. People who own their properties don't have to pay the theoretical rent that they would have to if they were in that property. That is a huge number that is boosting the CPI right now, a huge number, okay? So that, even in Europe, you take that out, inflation's almost over. Uh, crude, kind of the one wild card there that could give everybody a little bit of a headache as we're sitting at 81 bucks filled up my car the other day and i hit 70 bucks to fill it up for the first time in a while and my eyes said whoa i haven't seen 70 bucks in a while man um and yeah we're pushing some lofty levels on those crude prices so you start seeing higher crude prices okay because we've been helped at the pump for some time right look at this chart i've been talking about it but pay attention man because you get a bid in crude at the same time that you get the student loan payments coming back that's going to put a hurt on this economy, and maybe that's what tipped things over. Pay attention to those student loan payments. I've been talking about them. About them. Pay attention to them because the people who have outstanding student loan payments, okay, yes, they are some of the more educated members of society, but many of them that have not been paying that payment over the last three years, boy, that's going to hit their daily expenditure. That's going to hit um, – in terms of disposable income that they have and that's going to reverberate around this economy and that's all going to play in for basically the final quarter of the year, right? I'm sure people are starting to tighten their belts right now, knowing those payments are coming due in October. But as we know, there's nothing like a deadline to motivate you, right? Nothing like a deadline in terms of, yeah, we all have plans to put that money aside. But guess what? 
Easier said than done. October's when the deadline, when the payments have to start. That's when the wallets will get tightened, and you're going to see it come right into the holiday season. I think it's 27 million people. Maybe somebody can correct me in the data if I'm wrong. I think it might be 27 million people. Um, U.S. residents that are going to have their student loan payments kick back in on October 1st. I don't know if we've ever had anything like that hit our economy, have we? Maybe, again, give us a call, folks, 877-927-6648. I don't know. I don't know what's akin to something like that where you got almost 30 million people that are going to have a loan payment begin that's been off the books for about three years. And that loan payment, you're not talking about a $50 payment. You're not talking about $100. bucks. you are not talking about $200. you are talking about an average payment that's like three to 500 bucks. And you know what happens from there? you got even bigger numbers as well, right? So that all begins October. Market, negative territory to kick things off right now. We're coming back for the open, folks. S&P's down by 7. NASDAQ 100, negative by 32. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You're looking at an S&P down about just three points right now. You catch a little bit of vid coming into the opening bell. We're back above 44.50 at 44.51. All the markets basically flat. You get the NASDAQ 100 off by 18 right now. Dow off by 15. Russell off by one. We jump over to yields. You got the 10-year right now basically flat as well. We jump over the dollar index. Pulls back a bit. 103.15. We got the 10-year sitting at about 4.21% right now. 
And what else we got going on? Yeah, let's talk a little bit of Visa. So Visa, uh, they're facing some heat, and they have been, but they're facing some heat this morning. You jump over to Visa shares. Uh, so much for that heat. They catch a little bit on the open, man. You were trading lower to 236. Boom, the market opens one minute to go, and you pop by $2.30 as this market. Now got the Russell positive. You get the Dow positive. We'll see if we get positive with all the markets by the end of the day. Uh, and the story out there is that Visa, let's get the headline, faces DOJ scrutiny for how it prices token technology. Merchants get charged more if they shun Visa's tokens. Long running probe is now scrutiny, scrutinizing those price differences, right? You're talking about competitiveness, man. Anti-competitive monopolistic behavior, something like that. Visa is facing fresh scrutiny from the U.S. Justice Department over how it charges merchants for technology it uses to protect cardholder information. As part of this investigation that's been long running, enforcement officials have begun probing the payment giant's policies for charging retailers more if they don't use Visa's proprietary tokenization technology. They've been using that since 2014, I guess. Yeah, there it is. I was reading this earlier. At its core, the service replaces the 16-digit account number with a token that only Visa can unlock, which protects cardholder information as it passes between retailers and banks. Visa's issued more than 4 billion tokens, and more than 13,000 merchants have adopted the technology, including Netflix, Microsoft, Alphabet, Fitbit, um, and others. Visa, for years, offered merchants a lower price if they use the service. Service and they've long sought to see more of its call holders information tokenized because of the vastly improved security it brings to a payment. Uh, in recent weeks, as part of its normal schedule for adjusting fees, Visa and its partners informed merchants that it will tweak some of its rates in coming months. Uh, and yeah, some of those are sparked by the Justice Department's renewed interest in the tokenization. So it looks like they're trying to cover their tracks there. Don't think this is gonna tank Visa, man. Visa's a great stock. I mean, check out this thing in the long run, right? Holding up well, you're back to the highs of 2021, basically. You came into COVID at about 200, you spiked to 140, we're sitting almost at 240. You back it up further than that, and it's a one-way rocket ship, man, from 10 bucks in 2009 up to 252. The one thing I will say is you're coming into an area of resistance, in that area, the highs of 2021, you spiked to that area at the beginning of this year, uh, but Visa, strong company, man, but facing some headwinds as they got a little DOJ heat on their, on their trail. All right, what else we got pulled up? We talked about Visa. Yeah, we'll talk a little China again. Why not? We talked China yesterday. You got missed payments going on over there. You have a slowdown of builders, to say the least, uh, real estate over there. And China's now asking some funds to avoid net equity sales as markets sink. Can you imagine if this happened in America, man? Saying, hey, I know you guys uh, you know, got a lot of funds out there. But could you just not sell any of those equities because the market's going down so much? If you could just not sell those and hold on to them, right? And you got President Xi on the other hand saying, do you think you could do that for me? Do you think I can make you an offer that you can't refuse? Style question. Deepening slowdown, property sector crisis have been a drag. And Chinese authorities asked some investment funds this week to avoid being net sellers of equities as a route in the nation's financial markets deepened. Stock exchanges issued the so-called window guidance to several large mutual fund houses, telling them to refrain for a day from selling more onshore shale, sale, more onshore shares than they purchased. So you can't be a net seller, is what it is. The instructions were relayed to fund managers through investment executives at the firms. Uh, I imagine if you're a huge executive of a big financial firm out there, you're somewhere tapped in to the political discourse going on there. You don't get to be in a position like that unless you are. But yeah, be careful of China, man. Yeah, you're testing this year's lows, man. And you're talking about last year down to 3,500. Quite a difference from where our markets are right now. CSI has fallen for the past seven of the past eight sessions, and you had a 2.3% plunge on Friday. Yeah, big numbers over there in China. All right, let's talk a little bit of real estate. Mortgage demand. Weekly mortgage demand drops again as interest rates match a 22-year high, 7.16%. How's that for a mortgage for you, man? Average contract interest rate, 30-year fixed mortgages, 7.16%. How about the conforming loan balance? 726,000, man. Mortgage demand from home buyers 26% lower than the same week one year ago. Applications to refinance a home fell 2% for the week, 35% lower than the same week one year ago. 
let's see, with points decreasing, excuse me, to 0.68 from 0.70, including the origination fee for loans with a 20% down payment. The highest level since October of 2022, which also matches the high level seen in 2021. We got higher rates. We got the 10-year at 4.21%, man. That is going to push your 30-year mortgage rates above 7%, and that's where we sit, 7.16% right now. These markets finding a bid, man. Look at the Dow, up 70 points. S&Ps barely. Look at Visa. Yeah, I can't hold Visa down. I wouldn't be too worried about that one, man. Visa is a very strong company. Uh, and if anything, maybe they come back, change some of their pricing. Maybe they tweak things. Maybe they pay a fine. But they will be just fine, I imagine. Let's see how some of the FANG stocks are trading. Amazon shares, they're down 1%. Maybe some tough target earnings out there for Amazon. Send it low to 136.35 right now. You jump over to Apple, the big dog. Basically flat at 177.31. We jump over to Microsoft. They're talking about Microsoft in the den. Microsoft shares down about a quarter percent. Just below 321 to 32092. We got to talk about Tesla, the fan favorite. Catches a little bit of a bid on the open, but still in negative territory. We now got the SPs positive by three. Look at this market. Dow positive by 100. Let's check in on yields, see what's going to happen. And no real action on yields yet. And the dollar gets a little bit of a pullback. So maybe you got a weak dollar action out there. Let's see how some of the banks are trading. JP Morgan, slightly in the red this morning. Goldman, slightly in the red. And how about it? That's an easy segue to Goldman. How about this article out here, man? Uh, from Bloomberg, okay? And boy, it's an interesting one out there early this morning. I think this is like their big feature on the front page. Maybe they changed it. Uh, yeah, there it is. So that's the front page of Bloomberg.com this morning. Goldman CEO, most loyal deputy, is tested by mutinous partners. Mutinous. They're mutinous over at Goldman. The smell of seared red meat. $180 porterhouse, to be precise, hung in the air as bankers and traders from Goldman Sachs bluntly sized up their CEO. And who did they do it to? Um, Goldman President John Waldron. So he might be the next guy in line, okay? And he's the 54-year-old deer maker, spent three decades career to reach the financial industry's most rarefied era, CEO in waiting, right? But now he's got to pick a side, and that's what they're saying. He's being pressed by colleagues to pick a side, beat his own path to win over the disgruntled execs or risk being seen as an affable clone of the CEO. Seems like the headlines just don't stop, man, in terms of Goldman. You pull up the... The chart, you're off of the highs we saw in 2021, right? You're back to basically where we were at the beginning of that year. Not a bad chart when you back it up longer term. But yeah, there are some severe um, disagreements within Goldman out there. Check that article on Bloomberg. I'll post that one in the den as well. And stay tuned, folks. We're coming back with our man Teddy Kegstat. We'll talk some commodities. We'll talk some Forex. We'll talk some markets. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets picking a bit up on the open, man. We got the S&Ps right now up about eight points. Check out the Dow charging higher by about 155. We're at 35,162. We jump over to the dollar index. You got a little bit of dollar weakness as the market plows higher. We're trading at 103.09 right now from a high about 103.27. Uh, just as the market open. With that in mind, folks, let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstat. You can read Teddy's Tiger Forex Report every Monday, folks. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday, but this past Monday, he had an awesome webinar. You can check it out under the Services tab, Japanese Candlestick Patterns, Stock and Option Strategies with our man Teddy Kegstad. He did an hour in there. We had a bunch of great attendees on Monday. That webinar is archived. You can check that out under the Services tab, only $97. Bucks. Uh, Teddy Kegstad, great webinar Monday, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Tom. Um, for those that didn't catch it, Teddy, I was listening in the hour. You walked over, of course, candlestick patterns, but you talked. I loved how you were setting up, you know, different ways to trade some of the patterns that you were talking about in there. Could mm -hmm. you just give the listeners because it's so great. One of the great things about this course, folks, is that it's going to be good forever, Teddy. That was something that, you know, it's not time stamped. You're teaching them trading methodologies in there. People can sign up anytime they want. Go over that hour. It's archived. Could you just give people a little glimpse now that you've done the webinar? It's up there. It's archived for anyone that wants to sign up for just $97. Could you talk a little bit maybe about what you talked about Monday for all the attendees you had in there um, for that hour for Ken? Yeah, please. Sure. Well, we didn't just talk about the uh, just the Japanese candlestick patterns, but we actually gave you the, the ability to figure out what your risk areas would be, where your entry levels are, where your target price is for the moves that you're expecting to ha have happen. And then we broke down what kind of different trades you could do, whether it was being long stock, long calls, taking on different types of uh, spreads also. And then also looking at the pricing of those things and the differences to figure out which gave the best reward to risk ratio for the trades as well. So we would show how highlight some were valid in many of the, like for instance, we had situations where four different types of trades were valid for a particular signal. Then we had the same signal on a different stock where only two of the uh, trades would actually be viable because of the pricing. You know, so and those were things I think that those dynamics were covered very well during that webinar. And that was the main focus of what we were trying to do. And that's evergreen. That means that you can use this not just today, not just next month. I've been using this for decades and it will work for decades to come. So that's the word I was looking for, evergreen. Couldn't find it, man. I appreciate it. Exactly, and it will be. Um, so check it out, folks. It's right under services. It's 97 bucks. It's an awesome webinar. And I, I loved how you were doing those, you know, because there's a million ways that you can trade something, right? But I just loved how you were setting up those theoreticals off of the candlestick patterns. With that in mind, we get to the markets, man. How about uh, let's kick it off with maybe yields? What do you want to talk about, Tay? We got action, man. The dollar index, we got the 10-year above 4.2. What are you looking at in this market right now? Well, I know the the Forex Report uh, subscribers have to be happy. We've been nailing these levels, and no, this week is no different. Uh, we, I was calling for higher yields over the, over the few, first few sessions. Here we are making new move lows, higher yields on the uh, weekly, daily, and monthly basis. So I'm happy where they're at. You know, I mean, I've been saying that for a long time that, you know, we've had all these rate hikes, and we're still above where we were last October, you know. And now that we know that there's – uh, going to probably be a pause, maybe a little bit longer than I thought. <clears throat> I still see another one 
to two rate hikes before the year is out. Just because I don't think the numbers are, even if they they like what they've been seeing, they're still not that great, you know. Yeah. So I mean, the good thing is we don't really have any numbers now until really after Labor Day. So I, I would be very cautious as we hit these right now, these new highs and yields. I think we're going to start to find support pretty soon, and then we're gonna probably going to probably go into a digestive phase, which you can already see is happening in like the euro, uh, euro U.S. dollar, the pound dollar, and the U.S. dollar Swiss. The only ones that are really trending, and I think will continue to trend over the next couple of weeks are probably the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar, because their currencies are just collapsing as because of, they're fundamentally are a disaster, you know. So um, and I think that's going to that's going to be the main thing you're going to see over the next couple of weeks as we head towards Labor Day and the holiday trade here. Yeah, pretty cool. I was jumping through those lines as you were talking about it, and and I would somewhat agree in terms. I was reading an article today, Teddy, and it's talking about just the the probability priced in for a hike at their next meeting in September versus the probability of their next following meeting after that, which I believe is at the end of October, October 31st, November 1st, and actually a higher probability right now for that October, uh, November meeting, which would kind of make sense because it seems like we're lining into September. Maybe they can give it one more pause at least. They pause once, they hike. Maybe they can pause. The, the data hasn't been too alarming, but we got a long way to go till 2%, man. Um, so the market may be saying maybe we get one more as we come into the beginning of November. What do you think of crude prices, man? I, I was talking about it on the program. I'm not sure I heard you. I filled up my gas tank uh, for the first time in a while, 70 bucks. This past week, we got higher prices in crude sitting at $81. What do you think of that crude price? I did the same yesterday. I'm like, wait a minute. A week ago, I spent 75 cents less a gallon. <laughs> Is it, I, it hit me. 70 bucks for a full tank. I said, that's, that's, so. that's a rarity. And I was pretty low, but yeah, yeah. Right. Right. So, um, well, we had a sell signal that was triggered in crude oil. We had that in the Forex report. And now today, um, where crude is at right now, yeah, we're just below the uh, the, sell, the sell entry level. So um, I like the, the, the high that's in place right now. I think that's going to hold probably for the next like week or two. And I would say that you can probably see crude get back to that like $79, $80 um, level. And I think that would be a good, like, if especially if you're fading this rally right now if you're going to trade to the short side that would be a good place to start to take profit or at least definitely tighten up your stops i think that the oil could get back down to like 76 77 bucks a barrel and find a support there you know i don't think that this the the bull trend i'm bullish crude but i'm not aggressively bullish i don't think we're going to have an overdone just runaway rally that's not what i'm looking for i would be very surprised you know i think especially if yields start to pull back and what have you i don't see oil really pressing it now if yields really scream higher well that would be a different story because the cost to carryover function starts to kick in and then that could drive crude keep crude up in the mid 80s to 90 dollar level nice yeah and i had it up as you were talking about it and boy it was quite a trip from 67 bucks up to 85 so it shouldn't be too ridiculous if we get a little bit of a pullback right i got the 382 on this chart of just that run teddy from from 67 bucks what is that late mm -hmm. late june um 382 yes. is still 78 bucks man so that's quite a run that we had um in that crew contract uh when when you look at the next fed meeting teddy so are you like as a forex trader right in the dollar index you're, you're basing things technically and i know it's a difficult question i mean, even as i'm trying to surmise it um but at the dollar index and you've taught us so many times about the different forex pairings that go into this but we just got back all of that move lower in the dollar index from july 6th i was looking at it basically right you go from 103 mm -hmm. and change down to 99 we're sitting at 103 and change again what do you think about the dollar index in general at this exact price limit where we're kind of right back to where that move lower began at uh, well, I think that the dollar index now is going to have a little trouble climbing because as long as the euro, um, the euro U.S. dollar and the pound dollar, especially if they stay in a sideways range trade, you know, it, it's going to be the Aussie and the and the New Zealand dollar, their weakness that really gives boost to the dollar index. So do they have weight? Yes. Are they that strong? No. So I think that would mean that possibly if those other markets go if they stay sideways and don't get bearish um or uh, bullish in, in their own right i mean uh then i think the dollar index is going to have a tough time it'll stay positive but i wouldn't look for it to climb very much higher okay that was a quick nine minutes man teddy i appreciate the time as always Thank great you. webinar on monday man we had some awesome feedback i appreciate it there was a That's lot great. of words you jammed into that monday webinar <laughs> and uh have a great week man we'll talk to you next wednesday thanks tommy you have a great one teddy too.
Folks, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. As we jump around to finish up the program right now, let me get those numbers back up here in terms of the futures. We're sitting with an S&P up by six point now. NASDAQ 100, barely in the red. We get the Dow. NASDAQ 100 right now, negative by just nine points. Dow up by 150, man. 35,154. Let's check in on some of the companies with action on earnings. Target up by 6.3%, about an $8 move, as we mentioned. That was about the expected move in either direction. It gets that move in positive territory for Target shares. Walmart, up about a half a percent. You got TJ Maxx out with their numbers, up by 3.2%. And jumping around to some of the other final headlines we'll wrap up the program with. Interesting one out here from the journal. Investors need to worry about the bond market's return to normality. Basically saying, hey, when we had zero interest rates forever, that ain't normal, man. Okay, so get used to it. You had tips. Treasury inflation protected securities hit 1.89%, the highest since 2009 and back well within the range of what once counted as normal for the economy. Yeah, America has put the era of low rates behind it. Can it cope, right? What if this is the new normal, man? And what if, as everybody talks about, right, even though the chairman would never admit it, all he talks about is we got to get back to 2%. What if we're talking about 25 to 3%? What happens then? What if that's the reason why we've had yields 
just start spiking higher. And what that would mean, this is how things used to be, man. When we had 0% interest rates, this article talks about it. You had financiers financing companies that had no business being in business, um, et cetera. And, uh, and yeah, so we'll see where we go from there. But uh, yeah, that is something that may be coming to the market. Uh, a couple other articles. Be careful if you're looking for any of those weight loss drugs online. Yeah, there's scammers everywhere. Okay, a couple headlines. We're not going to go through it. Dozens of websites are selling knockoff Ozempic and Manjaro. No prescription required. Be careful out there, folks. And the last one, um, you're looking for a vacation on the cheap? Well, you want to go hit up Arizona, man, in the summer. You can save about 600 bucks a night. That's what the Four Seasons is going for on Arizona. $400 a night compared to 1000 bucks a night somewhere else. You just got to withstand that heat. Give Larry Pesavento a call. Coming up at 1 o'clock today if you want to talk about it, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in. Stay tuned. Basil Chapman, he's coming up next with the Tiger Technicians, folks. Have a great one.